Hey guys, my name is Logan with Nissan of Cookville, and I'm proud to announce that we're going to be starting a new YouTube series today on the Nissan of Cookville YouTube channel called Frequently Asked Friday. I'm going to be hosting the show, and it's going to be about every single model in Nissan's lineup, and it's going to be about the questions that you guys ask us the most, that way we can answer as many questions as possible for you guys. Starting with the 2021 Rogue Platinum right behind me, let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay guys, so starting on the interior of the 2021 Rogue, I do want to make one side note. The vehicle that we've selected here is going to be a Platinum, and that's going to be the same for the rest of the vehicles in this series. We're only going to pick the top trim level vehicles. Reason being is simply so we have a perfect range of technology and equipment to show you guys, but you do have to keep in mind that some of this stuff won't be available on the lower trim level vehicles. So you do have to make sure that you're paying attention which trim level you guys are interested in and which trim level you're inquiring about versus the Platinum trim. I will make notes whenever it is necessary. Moving on from there, the Platinum Rogue has got tons of equipment in it. From the fully digital dashboard to the 9-inch color touch display, the tri-zone climate control system, even back here to the all-wheel drive system, there's a lot of different technologies that tend to confuse people their first few weeks of ownership of the 2021 Rogue. That's why we're making this video series. That way we can give a nice little video catalog for Nissan vehicle owners. Let's go ahead and get started with the 9-inch color touch display. All right, guys, so this is the 9-inch color touch display on the 2021 Platinum Nissan Rogue. The 21 Rogue does, however, come standard with a 7-inch color touch display. The 9-inch color touch does start on the SV Premium, and that's also where your built-in navigation features are also going to begin. Anything with a 7-inch color touch display is going to have all of the same functionality as far as Bluetooth, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and Sirius XM are concerned. They're just not going to have that built-in navigation software. Moving forward from there, of course, this is the home display. This is going to be your general hub for accessing the different functionalities of this display. Of course, on the right side, you can have the different Sirius XM apps and different traffic notifications. And on the left side is going to be fully customizable with any widget of your choice, just like an Android phone. Moving over here to the far bottom of the display, you'll see kind of a taskbar setup, and that's going to be the easiest way to navigate through this display to get all of the different tabs and different bits of information that it has to offer for you. On the far right, you're going to find your settings tab. That is going to be where you can make this display work better for you. Whether it's different connections, different navigation settings, even the way that the screen beeps at you whenever you touch it. If you go over to the right, you start getting into some more Nissan Connective Services stuff where you can go through, update the system of the vehicle, edit the user information if you have more than one person who is daily driving this vehicle, or even go into the system voice for the voice commands and voice operations. Moving one button to the left, we open up the connection display. This is going to be the absolute easiest way to pair a phone to Bluetooth or even access the Wi-Fi hotspot that is available on Nissan vehicles. I'm going to go ahead and pair my iPhone to Bluetooth just so you guys can get a general rundown of how that works. Just know that the, uh, this process is going to be the same for both an iPhone and an Android phone. There will, however, be slight nuances on the phone side of things whenever it asks for certain permissions. So I'm going to go ahead and start off by hitting Add New. I'm going to open up the Bluetooth settings on my iPhone and find the button that says My Rogue. I'm then going to click that. I'm going to wait a couple seconds for the two devices to find each other. And then the car is going to ask me to confirm the Bluetooth pin. I'm going to look down at my device, confirm that the pin does in fact match, and click the pair button. The car is then going to ask for permissions to sync both contacts and messages. I'm going to allow both because I do want this car to have access to my contacts. And then I am going to allow it to use wireless CarPlay. That is a feature on the 2021 Rogue Platinum. No other trim level of the 21 Rogue other than the SL has that feature. So you do have to get one of those two trim levels in order to get this functionality. On the display, you'll see now it's asking us about uh, would you like to use Apple CarPlay with this device. I'm going to go ahead and click yes. Don't ask any more. Make sure that has the little orange button so it doesn't. And then, of course, it does need to use Wi-Fi. I'm not going to use the uh, one gigabyte of free data that this vehicle has, so I'm going to go ahead and click no so we don't use that. However, you'll see we do have a little wireless CarPlay button popping up right there. So now I can use the wired CarPlay if I wanted to, simply by plugging in my phone to one of those USB ports down there. However, if I wanted to use the wireless CarPlay, it's as simple as clicking that button and turning on the car's onboard Wi-Fi. From here, I can access my phone from any part of that color 9-inch display. That way, I don't have to have my phone out perfect place to store my phone is going to be in this little wireless charging pad right in front of the electronic gear shift. That way I know my phone is going to be charged whenever I get to my destination. 
Moving on from there, I'm going to open up the map display, and this is going to be only on vehicles with the built-in navigation software. This is going to be, of course, the Nissan built-in navigation. It is going to need updating every other year or so once road, uh, new roads come around, but for the most part, it is very, very solid right out of the box. Very, very easy to zoom in and out and see different points of interest around me. They even go as far as marking each individual gas station with those big, big blue icons. That way you know exactly where to go if you're low on fuel. My favorite thing about the navigation is the points of interest button, or you'll see a POI. What that means are different points of interest that Nissan thinks that you're going to want to know exactly where they are on the map. Anything from a gas station to an ATM, even parking structures, fast food garages, convenience stores, shopping centers, hospitals, you name it, Nissan wants you to know where it is. You go into any one of those points of interest categories, like for restaurants for example, and it'll go ahead and load up based on your uh, options around you. It'll go ahead and sort these by closest to furthest, and it will show you 100 to begin with. So if you're in a very densely populated area, you may not see your favorite store on here if you're slightly out of the radius of that building. Now I can go down through here and scroll across this entire list of restaurants, and once I find one that I like, I'm a Baskin Robbins kind of guy, I'm going to go ahead and click on that. It's going to set a new destination, and all I have to do is click start, and the car is going to the take you The calculation is complete. Proceed to the nearest road. Of course, the vehicle is going to give me some audio guidance as well as a visual representation of where I need to go. And since Baskin Robbins was only 0.3 miles away, we have a fairly short route to get there. It's very easy to cancel that route. All you have to do is click the cancel button and confirm. That way you don't accidentally touch anything and you're right back to your standard navigation. In order to plug in a specific destination, you do just click on this little flag right there and you can enter a point of, ad uh, point of interest or a, an address or you can even store a few addresses in your address book and even a home location. That way you can easily navigate back to your garage from anywhere in the country. Moving on from there, going back to the main menu display. Of course, we've already gone over the home. Let's go ahead and click on the audio tab. This is going to be one of my favorite displays on this uh, nine inch color touch. Main reason is I'm a big music guy. The audio display puts all of your music at your fingertips and it's all extremely easy to access at the push of a button. Of course, you've got your AM, FM, Sirius XM, and Bluetooth audio. The USB is gonna be grayed out at the moment because I don't have a device plugged into a USB port. However, if I did, that would be lit up as an option just like the rest of these. That is going to be typically for your Android Auto and Apple CarPlay experience. However, you can also stream music to this head unit via a small iPod with just a simple USB cable, if that's your style. Going into each one of these displays, it is very easy to set presets down here on the bottom as well. If you like a specific radio channel on Sirius XM, you can see we're currently on channel one and that is not paired down here. All it is is pressing and holding one of these buttons until you get the beep, and then of course your channel will come up on that highlight right down there. You have separate favorites for AM, FM, and Sirius XM, so that is one thing to take note. And as far as your favorites are concerned, you do have three different pages, meaning 18 total presets for each individual media outlet. Moving on from there, back to the home menu, we do have the info screen as well. This is mainly going to be Sirius XM information. All of this does come free for 90 days with the purchase of any new Nissan vehicle. However, it is on a subscription base after those 90 days with Sirius XM. Moving on from there, of course, you can see Sirius XM does give you tons of different information options such as different stocks, sports scores, even Sirius XM weather and traffic if you're trying to plan a road trip. Last but not least, as far as the 9-inch color touch display is concerned, we have this phone tab right down here. This is going to be only available if you have a phone paired via Bluetooth. However, it is the easiest way to access all of the functionality on your phone. You can go through and set up quick dial contacts, access your phone book, call history, or even just dial a number if you've got one written down on a sticky note. The functionality of the color touch display does not stop there. However, that is all of the options down here. So if I go ahead and activate the reverse gear on this 21 Rogue, you'll see our backup camera system is going to come up. The Platinum Rogue is equipped with a 360 round view monitor, so it's going to have a little bird's eye view camera off to the right side. This vehicle does also have predictive steering, so as I turn the steering wheel to the left and the right, you'll see that that little orange box behind me is going to move around, showing me exactly where the vehicle is going to end up based on the angle of my steering wheel. 
I can actually click this camera button to the bottom right of the display and it'll cycle through a few different camera modes for me. On the right there you can see that is actually my front passenger side wheel. That is the most common wheel to curb. So whenever you're in a tight parking situation or even going through a small drive through and you're worried about curbing that wheel, go ahead and do yourself a favor and pull up this view. That way you can have all of that insurance and guarantee that you're not going to curb that wheel if you can. And of course, going into drive, your front facing camera is then going to come up if the vehicle is equipped with the 360 round view monitor. What that means for you people who park your vehicles in the garage, as you approach an object, whether it's this Kia in front of us or even the wall in your garage, your parking sensors will start to beep, beep, and beep. Plus, you also get that little window right down there in the bottom left hand corner showing you exactly what everything's going on around the vehicle, meaning it's very difficult to bump into things with a 2021 Nissan Rogue. Moving on from there, let's go ahead and talk about the full digital dash that's available on the Platinum Rogue. Okay guys, so this is the full digital dash available on only the Platinum 2021 Nissan Rogue. I will go over the 7 inch advanced drive assist display available on the lower trim level offerings in just a few moments. Moving on from there, of course, on the full digital dash, on the left side we've got our digital tech and on the right side we've got the digital speedo. On all four corners of this display, it gives us tons of information such as our temperature readout, our fuel economy readout on the bottom right, as well as the fuel gauge as well. Temperature and time in the top, which is just a simple staple. And then of course in the center, it's going to show us our cardinal directions as well as the multimedia on that center stack. Nissan gives us the great option to just simply scroll down and clean up this display very, very much. That's going to give a nice clean display for those people who don't want a ton of information shooting them right in the face. Now, of course, going on to the next display, we do have a drive computer. This is going to go over all the different averages that your vehicle accrues as you drive, such as different fuel economy averages, speed averages, or even just engine time. Scrolling down on there is just going to bring up the uh, manual fuel economy. And then, of course, going to the right, we do, of course, also have a tire pressure readout. This will give us the tire pressure readout once the tires get up to temperature, not while we're sitting in a parking lot like we're doing right now. Scrolling down from there, Nissan lets us see the all-wheel drive readout. Now, of course, this is only available on vehicles with the all-wheel drive system. I'll go over that in just a few moments. Moving to the right again, we do have the navigation readout. This is going to be one of the uh, more technical displays, I guess you could call it, simply because it is also paired with your 9-inch color touch display over there to the right. If you have a destination plugged in with your built-in navigation, you will get turn-by-turn -turn directions on this display as well. That way you don't have to keep darting your eyes from right to left and taking your attention off the road. Moving to the right, we do have just a standard multimedia display. This is going to be a display that only shows us what's playing on the radio at the moment. This will also show you incoming calls. To the right one more time is going to be my favorite display and that is your Safety Shield 360. It's one thing to have all those safety features on the car and it's one thing to see them work for you whenever you uh, go to swerve out of a lane and a sensor freaks out or whenever you get close to the vehicle in front of you and your parking sensor start beeping at you. This display gives you a visualization of all of those safety features working for you. Uh, just right now, of course, we've got our Ford Collision Warning, the Blind Spot Monitoring, and the Lane Keep Assist, and it even goes as far as showing us that the Lane Keep Assist feature is currently disabled on the vehicle. Scrolling down from there, we do have a slightly more cleaned up display. This is going to be where you utilize your Nissan Pro Pilot Assist. So if I scroll down from here, you can see that we do have the different distance indicators, and it will show us how we are staying in the lanes. Scrolling down one more from there is going to be the street limit sign and traffic sign recognition. This vehicle does utilize a small camera right there in front of the rear view mirror. That way it can take a quick snapshot of every single speed limit sign that you pass. That way you're never left wondering what the speed limit is on the current road. Going right one more time from there and clicking OK allows us to go into the different settings that the vehicle has to offer. And it even gives you a nice little thumbnail off to the right. That way you get a different little tidbit of what you're going to be uh, adjusting. Going into the VDC setting, that stands for Vehicle Dynamic Control, just gives us the option to disable or enable the trash control system. Going back from there, we have the driver assistance settings. This is going to be the screen that I know most of you guys will spend a lot of time in. This is where you can go through and adjust each and every one of those safety features that Nissan has to offer to work better for you. So if you don't like the way that the emergency braking system works, you can simply go in there and completely disable the front and rear emergency braking. However, there's a caveat to that. If you disable a safety feature, depending on which feature it is, you may bring up one of these warning lights for you. Of course, disabling the front and rear emergency braking is going to bring up two quite scary looking Looking lights and that's just letting you know that you do not have those systems watching your back at the moment. 
going back from there, of course, you can go through and adjust even more than just your safety features, such as the timer alerts, driver attention alerts, different parking aids with the backup camera, so on and so forth. Going back to the personal display, that is going to be this display that we're playing with right now. So you can actually go through and edit different pieces of information that this digital dashboard can read out to you. And you can see we've got tons of different options. And even if you wanted to blank out all the displays, you have that ability as well. So if you don't like all of these uh, information uh, kind of just blasting you right in the face, you can just turn all of that off very, very easily. Moving on, of course, we do have the heads-up display adjustment as well, where you can adjust the individual brightness characteristics as well as the safe zone characteristics of the heads-up display. And even if you notice that it's slightly askew, you can adjust the rotation of that display as well. That way it can work more better for you and your comfortable driving position. Going into the content selection, you can see what all types of information we can have reading out on that heads-up display. Anything from navigation, audio, even phone calls and incoming text messages, and the speed limit sign as well are all great options that you can have. And if you play with it too much and you end up messing up the uh, brightness or the height and rotation of it, you can simply go down and reset. And that is the great thing that Nissan has allowed on this vehicle. Anything on here, if you play with it too much to the point where you get something and you don't really know how to revert it back to the factory settings, you'll find a reset button at the bottom of almost every single menu in here. That way you can revert every part of this vehicle back to its factory settings extremely easily. Going into the eco mode settings, you can even go through here and adjust the way that the eco mode for the vehicle works. You can completely lock out the ability to use cruise control during eco mode and so on and so forth. Even going in for the eco mode history, of course, this vehicle won't have the best since it's been most of its life moping around on a car lot. And then, of course, going down here, your tire pressure eco advice is one of the coolest ones. Of course, as you adjust, inflate, and deflate your tire pressures, your fuel economy will increase and decrease accordingly. This right here, a little readout, gives you all of the best advice. That way, you know your vehicle is going to be getting the tip-top fuel economy that it can. Even going in here to the TPMS settings, you can have different settings for every single part of this vehicle. Just wanted to show you guys how in-depth the settings are on the 2021 Rogue. Let's go ahead and move on to the Tri-Zone Climate Control System, since I know that's something that confuses a ton of people. Okay guys, so the 21 Rogue comes standard with a single zone climate control system that is extremely easy to use. That's going to be something like a temperature readout on the left side, and then of course your fan speed is going to be on the right knob. Now, moving forward from there, you do have the optional dual zone climate control, which is available on the SV Rogue. If you move up to the SL Rogue, you start getting into the tri-zone climate control system, which is what this Platinum Rogue is equipped with. What that means is your driver, your passengers, and then of course the rear seat passengers are each going to have their own individual climate control zone that they can adjust the temperature for. Now the entire vehicle is going to share a fan speed and that it can only be controlled from right here on this dash button. Moving forward from there, your driver temperature can be simply adjusted by this left knob, passenger by the right knob, and of course you get your readouts right there. And you can change those from Fahrenheit to Celsius if that's something that you're interested in. Your rear climate control can be adjusted in one of two locations in the vehicle. One from up here, this is very, very easy to do if you have a child back there in a car seat and you want to make sure that they can stay comfortable. You can very easily adjust the temperature of their portion of the cabin. Now, if you have some toddlers back there that are a little bit more independent and they want to adjust the climate control themselves, you do have these same two buttons on the back of the center console plus a small LCD display back there. That way you get the same temperature readout as well. Now, this vehicle does also have sync and auto. What that means, if I click this sync button, it's going to sync up both your rear control and the passenger control to whatever the driver temperature readout is. And of course, as I adjust the driver, the rest of the vehicle will adjust itself accordingly. Now, if I go in and press this auto button, what that's going to do is let me set my temperature and the vehicle will adjust the fan speed accordingly. It will then monitor the fan speed and whatever temperature it's outputting. That way it does its best to keep the cabin whatever temperature you select. And the greatest thing about the automatic climate control is you can adjust the driver, passenger, and rear climate control all independently of each other and still maintain the automatic climate control functionality. Of course, you also have the mode adjustment switch, which is right down here. You can toggle through all these different climate control modes. However, please note that doing that will get rid of the automatic climate control because you're then adjusting the climate control for the vehicle instead of letting it do it for you. Just to the right of that button, we do have our front and rear windshield defrosters. And then, of course, on the Platinum Rogue, we do have heated front seats as well as a heated steering wheel. 
those functionalities are available on lower trim level vehicles, but just to give you an example. And then of course at the top, we do have our fresh air button and our recirc button. That way you can adjust those accordingly. If you're chilling out in traffic and you've got a lot of cars around you, I personally recommend using the recirc button. That way you're only getting clean air from inside the vehicle. If you're going down a nice country road and you want to uh, get a feel for what the windows feel like going down, but you don't want to roll those windows down, go ahead and adjust that uh, fresh air button. That way you can get nice clean air being pulled in from the outdoors. Of course, each individual climate control vent is going to have its own airflow adjustment and angle adjustment. That way you can more accurately point the air and monitor the airflow in whatever direction you need it. Okay guys, so this is the electronic gear shift found in every single 21 Rogue as well as the 2022 Nissan Pathfinder. And given the fact that we've already put this in two of our vehicles, I'd be willing to bet it's going to be a welcome addition in more of the Nissan lineup in years to come. Moving forward from there, this is a very, very easy gear shift to use once you spend a little bit of time with it. There's a little bit of a learning curve, and that's why I wanted to make this little segment of the video to help you guys who just recently bought a vehicle with this function and let you know that there's more people out there that are struggling with it than you realize. Every single time you touch this gear shift, it's always good practice to go and make sure your foot is firmly on the brake and your hand kind of naturally rests on top of it like this. There's a small button off to the left hand side or the driver's side of the gear shift that your thumb will naturally depress. You'd have to put a little bit of force down, but it's a nice button. In order to go into reverse, you're going to want to push this gear shift forward. You'll notice there are two separate notches that you hit in the movement of the gear shift. There's a small detent in there. I'll talk about that in just a second. Once that gear indicator light turns orange and your backup camera comes up, that's how you know you are fully engaged into your reverse gear. In order to go into drive, it is the exact opposite. Rest your hand firmly on top, engage that button to the left hand side, and pull it rearward until you get to that second click. At that point, you will then activate that gear indicator for the drive, and then of course, if you're using your camera system, the front facing camera will come up if the vehicle's equipped with that. In order to go into park, all you have to do is click that P button, wait for the gear indicator to shift over, and let your foot off the brake. Do keep in mind though, there will be some amount of rollback given the fact that this is a CVT transmission. If the vehicle senses it will roll back an extreme amount, it'll go ahead and apply that electronic parking brake automatically. Whenever it comes time to leave from that destination, it'll disengage that automatically as well. Now talking about that middle detent, that's how we're going to get into our neutral gear. So once again, foot on the brake, hand over top with our thumb on that left side button. And we're going to find that middle detent and just hold it there for about a half second to a second and a half and that will activate our neutral gear range. This is going to be if we're trying to put this vehicle on a trailer or anything like that that you need the transmission completely disconnected from the wheels. If I go ahead and let my foot at the brake right now, we are on a slight incline so we will begin rolling back and of course I stop again and we are still in neutral. Now the great thing about this electronic gear shift is it's got your back. As you are learning to use it, I'm willing to bet that you'll try to turn the vehicle off with the vehicle still in a gear more than once before you go ahead and click it into park. So I'm going to go in to demonstrate what happens whenever that happens. So now I am in drive. I'm going to go ahead and shut the vehicle off and I just want you guys to keep attention to the top of that gear shift. The vehicle is now shut off and you'll see it ran through all the gears and then into park. What it did is automatically went into park for us. So the vehicle safely shut off and I can safely take my foot off the brake. Now, don't rely on that functionality to put the vehicle into park every single time. That is a design element of the Rogue, so it's supposed to do that, but it's supposed to be a safety net to allow vehicle owners to get used to this uh, electronic gear shift slowly and gradually. Plus, if you ever needed to rapidly exit the vehicle and you did not firmly press that park button enough, but you still went ahead and shut the vehicle off, the vehicle will not roll back because it will automatically put the vehicle into park whenever you turn it off. Okay guys, so there's just a little bit more information I wanted to go over as far as the interior is concerned before we start talking about some exterior features on the 21 Rogue. Now every single Rogue is going to be equipped with a drive mode selector. Whether it's front wheel drive or all wheel drive will vary a little bit. Now this vehicle is an all wheel drive, meaning the drive mode selector is going to be this little wheel right here. And we do have five drive modes as opposed to the three available on the front wheel drive model. We do of course have our sport mode, eco, auto, snow, and off-road as the five options available on the all-wheel drive Rogue. And this is a very, very nice knob to use in my opinion. Now, moving forward from there, you don't want to get your sport mode confused with your paddle shifters. They're two completely different systems and I want to show you how to engage both of them individually. Of course, with sport mode, it is as simple as scrolling over to that drive mode with your drive mode selector. 
in order to use the paddle shifters, you really have one of two options. One, you can go ahead and put the vehicle down into drive and then just click on the paddle shifter and that will bring up the paddle shift option. Or you can pull down on this gear shift again and that will bring up a one as a gear indicator on the left side of the digital dash. As I click up, which it's not going to let me because we're not moving, it's going to go through different speed ranges. Now this is a CVT, meaning you still have a one gear transmission essentially, or an unlimited amount of ratios transmission that you're controlling with these paddle shifters. It just gives you an extra little bit of fun if you plan on doing any spirited driving with the vehicle. And honestly, they are very, very quick to shift. If you've ever experienced paddle shifters with a little bit of lag, these are quite nice to deal with in my opinion. Now, if you ever accidentally engage these, which a lot of my customers have called me saying that they have done before, it is as simple as pulling rearward on the electronic gear shift one more time, just as you were like that to put it into drive. And that is the easiest way to toggle back and forth between your manual and your automatic shift modes. Now, if you are in manual shift mode and you don't realize it, and you end up going up to the top of the RPM range of that specific gear ratio, the vehicle will shift for you. So you really truly don't have to worry about accidentally blowing up the engine if you accidentally drop into manual mode one or two times. Now, if you consistently drive in manual mode and you keep that RPM range higher, you are using it at your own risk at that point because you are gonna be putting more wear and tear on the engine. The best way to drive the vehicle is the way the manufacturer intended it, and that is going to be an automatic. However, Nissan was nice enough to give us those paddle shifters as an extra option to have more fun with the 2021 Rogue. Let's go ahead and talk about some exterior features before we end the video. Okay guys, so this is the front fascia of the 2021 Rogue, and there's a few things that I wanted to make note of out here. You've got a full array of parking sensors on both the front and rear of this vehicle, as well as a radar sensor in that Nissan badge as well. This vehicle is, like I said earlier, equipped with that V60 round view monitor, so your camera system is also going to be up here underneath your Nissan badge. The main reason I wanted to bring you guys out front is because these are sensors. Sensors sense items and objects. What that means is they're also going to be picking up some of the debris that's going to come off of the road. If you own a Nissan vehicle or any vehicle with parking sensors for that matter, and you drive out on the highway and it's pouring down the rain, I'm sure that your sensor array has freaked out on you at least once. Or at least a message has come up on the vehicle and it said that some functionality of the vehicle is temporarily unavailable. All that is saying is that one or more of your sensors is currently congested with either rain or road debris, meaning that it cannot operate to its fullest extent. Moving from there, of course, if you get any wet leaves or leaf litter stuck to one of these sensors, you may have to come outside and knock it off the vehicle yourself before that sensor starts functioning properly. That's something that we've been dealing with with parking sensors as since we've put it, been putting them in vehicles, and that's every make and model for that matter. So of course, your different radar controls with Nissan are gonna function pretty similar to how they do with any other vehicle for that matter. I just wanted to make that one simple note because that is something that we get very, very frequently here at Nissan of Cookville. And once again, guys, my name was Logan with Nissan of Cookville. This was the 2021 Rogue, and this was today's first episode of Frequently Asked Friday. If this is something you guys are interested in, drop some questions down in the comment section below. That way we can more accurately answer your questions that you guys ask us. Thank you. Have a fantastic rest of your day.